Each Sunday, I have tried to examine a different subject and consider the problem of the existence of a different point of view. Tonight, I will try to consider it from the point of view of the effort. This constant battle we have to master something. To succeed. To achieve a result. And let's see if we find a brief period in which we understand the whole meaning of this struggle. There is so much sadness and so little happiness in our lives. When we find happiness, our problems related to power, position, achievement of goals, and when there is happiness, the struggle ceases to come to be and the divisions between men are undoing. We have often noticed that in those rare moments when we are perfectly happy, quiet, all conflicts cease to exist. Thus happiness only comes when intelligence operates in its highest form. And intelligence means understanding of suffering. We know the sadness is always our side. It is our constant companion. It seems to have no end. Suffering in different forms at different physical and psychological levels. We know certain remedies to crash physical pain, but psychologically this is much more difficult. The psychological problem is much more complex requires greater attention and study, deeper penetration, and a broader experience. But suffering wherever it is, at any level that is placed, is always painful. The problem, therefore, is this. Can we extinguish sadness, suffering, by effort, by a process of thought? Understand that I am not referring, for now, to physiological suffering, to painful disease, but to psychological suffering. This suffering is extinguished by the effort. Through that, we call the process of thought. Physical pain can be overcome by the effort, by investigating the causes of the disease. And can suffering, pain, anxiety, frustration, numerous psychological ills, be overcome by effort, thought? It is a very vast problem to be solved in such a short time. However, if you follow closely, I think it is possible to understand its meaning, and perhaps understanding directly, be able to solve it, or rather, maybe have a glimpse of that happiness that destroys pain, which puts in term to our burning loneliness and our pen. And what is suffering, therefore? Isn't it the desire to become with all your frustrations? Suffering is not the result of our desire to be different from what we are. The actions based on this desire do not lead to disintegration conflict, the endless wave of confusion. Thus, sadness or suffering is the desire to become, the desire to be positive or negatively. I think that, fundamentally, we can all agree in this regard. Suffering manifests itself when there is a desire to become. In this being, it is generated action, whether social or individual. And this action expands without ceasing for disintegration, futility, frustration, as we see to happen around us. Now can this desire to become, which is the cause of sadness, extinguish through effort? That's what we try to do, isn't it? When we see ourselves frustrated, when there is pain, when there is suffering, we try to overcome it. We try to battle him. This positive or negative attack is called effort, isn't it? That is, effort exists or comes to existence when we are anxious to modify what we are. I am this and I want to become that. This change, this movement to change this to that, is called effortune. Now, and what is modification? What is a change? I do not ask the meaning of the dictionary, but its inner meaning. Positively, change means a modified continuity. I am this, and I want to become that. I want to become the opposite of what I am in. But the opposite, it is the continuation of what I am differently. So therefore, the opposite in which there is always effort is the modified continuity of the opposite itself. Non-avidity is the modified continuity of greed. It remains avidity only under a different name because it implies being. And this coming being, which requires effort, is the cause of suffering. We see that the effort implies continuity in a modified way. And can the thought, can the process of thought, finally, suffering? All of this is probably somewhat abstract and difficult. We'll simplify when I start answering the questions regarding this. I believe, however, that we must extend the abstract ahead and then construct structurally, specifically. And that's what we will do when we understand the basic principle of this problem. 
If suffering can be overcome by the effort that creates the opposite, and if suffering, which is the desire to become something now or then, can be extinguished by thought, why, what is it thinking? When you say, I'm thinking, what does that mean? It means that you are seeking to solve the problem of sadness by thought. But can the thought finally pain, psychological anxiety, fear? What is then thinking? No doubt, thinking is memory reaction. If I had no memory, it would not be able to think. Memory is the residue of experience, of the experience not at all understood. When it understands something completely, fully, this one leaves no trace in. Only the experience that was not digested, completed, leaves a trace, which we call memory. Thus, thinking is memory reaction. And when we try to solve the problem of suffering through thought, being thought reaction of memory, there is no certainty at all, because memory is the continuity of effort. I am not proposing a skillfully elaborated puzzle here, but if you think well, you will see that there are three things implicated in your process of eliminating pain. The effort, thought, and memory. Do not decorate what I just said. Note in your daily life, and you will see. You don't need to read books philosophical, but to observe yourself in anxiety and pain, and you will see these three things in operation. And can these things overcome, dissolve pain, suffering? They cannot, of course. Because the process of thought is pure result of incomplete understanding. And all modification is mere modified continuity that creates the opposite. Our problem, therefore, is to find out how to end suffering. How to create that state of happiness that does not result from effort. I don't know if you ever tried to be happy. Surely he has never been successful in his attempts. Happiness arises spontaneously without calling it. It cannot, therefore, result from effort. And if we seek happiness trying to get rid of suffering, we will not understand suffering. The problem therefore consists of the following. How to end suffering without the thought process? Effortless. Because the effort implies, as I have already pointed out, the creation of duality, the opposites. And what is the opposite is always within the field of its own opposite. And what is then? What does suffering cease? When it understands the process of thought, the process of effort, the memory process, when it actually understands, in the way I explained, when it is aware of these three processes, what happens then? When you are aware of something, what is exactly your experience? Certainly, when it is aware of something, there is no condemnatory attitude, is it? There is no justification or identifying. It is simply consent. I am aware of that verter, those birds that fly. In this perception, there is no condemnation, there is no justification. Now, if it is aware of suffering without the three processes to work, in order to overcome it, if it is conscious, without condemnation, it will then see that there is a vigilant passivity, a passive perception, without any requirement. It is very vigilant. No part of your being sleeps because it has explored, as we said, the whole process of memory, thought, and effort, and it is thus. And in this lucidity, there is perception, stillness, tranquility, a free observation of prejudice, free of demands, and will then see how suffering comes to an end. But this perception requires extraordinarily persistent vigilance to see how the mind works when suffering. To accompany the swift movement of each thought and thus understand the whole process of the effort of thought and memory.